The Premier is on the line. Premier Dunderdale joining us uh, for a few minutes this morning to uh, give out points of view that she has and to uh, answer some uh, questions. Premier Dunderdale, are you still there? I'm still with you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I, I got an email from a person who seems very knowledgeable in this whole area of uh, variable rates and floating rates and fixed rates and, uh, and resets and all, all, all of that. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of but he concludes his email by saying, I suspect that this 3.75% or so rate that they're all quoting is a forecast uh, dreamed up by the same folk that dreamed up the electricity demand. <laughs> same people. And uh, he seems to think that you're in an, air, an airy-fairy area here. You know, 3.75% uh, per- is not fixed and it could go way higher in the future. What, what's your... What's your, uh, your response to that it's mind it mind by it takes my breath away that people actually put those positions forward that the premier of Newfoundland and Labrador will come with the uh, president and CEO of Nelcor yeah. you know backed by Toronto Dominion Bank and uh, Bank and Goldman Sachs you know two of the largest banking systems in the country in the world mm-hmm. and who say you know and and in the face of a 3.8 percent interest rate locked in for 40 years the same to us that we're all lying. Yeah, or, or that you're, you know, you're giving, you're giving sort of generalities where, where specifics are lacking or something no, like that. There's no question. And, you know, like when we did the announcement the other night, we had, uh, you know, there was such a representation uh, of the people of the province in, in the lobby. And when I did the announcement of 3.8% oh, locked in over 40 years, I mean, there was a gasp in the room. Yeah. A gasp. And, you know, we had uh, the, uh, you know, members of the business community. Uh, we had representatives from Memorial University and the Department of Commerce and Business and so on. And, you know, and that has been the talk of the business community uh, for the last two days in, in, uh, in this problem. You know, back 30, 40 years ago when we were building the Churchill, uh, Upper Churchill mm-hmm. uh, Dam, our, our interest rate was 7.8%. Yeah. It had to be subsidized by uh, Hydro Quebec to get it down to six point six percent. And those in the yeah. days when 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 money was cheap, you know that is the value of the loan guarantee. And you know, and I have have said to many people over the last number of months, you know, Stephen Harper could have walked away from his commitment to us at any time. I mean, what were we going to do? Not vote for him? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's but, been down that road, hasn't he? Yeah. But to his credit, you know, he did the due diligence yeah. and he made, a, you know, the bar was set high in us in proving to him that this was a strong project and so on. But he kept his word to the people of Newfoundland and Labrador to provide a federal loan guarantee. I mean, that gave us the same, like, you know, we're up there almost with Canada savings bonds. Mm. That has saved us one point upwards of 1.1 billion yeah more than the way you know we'll be able to verify how much more but it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars hmm. well counter to that email i just read there here's another one mr raw i hope the premier knows that while she is low in the polls at the moment many people respect and admire her and are behind her 100 percent. do you get many emails like that <laughs> yes i do oh do you i, I was going to say i, I truly do <laughs> And, you know, I, you know, like I always say to people, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just a little girl from Bjorn, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, somebody at my father's wake saying, you know, he never earned an easy dollar in his life. Mm. So I grew up in a great big family and, you know, we were always taught that you had to work and, and, and pay your way. And so I, I live an ordinary life like most Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. So I go to the supermarket to get my own groceries and so on. And that is one of the joys of it. You know, it mm. takes me a lot longer to pick up my groceries. Yeah. But people give me feedback all the time. And, you know, they, t- they express their concern to me. You know, I'm out and about talking to people. And I get a lot of encouragement. And uh, a lot of people say prayers for me, which is particularly <laughs> special to me, given that my mother has passed away. And I always knew that she had the rosary beads going. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's all comforting. But, you know, the bottom line, for for me is you know we offered a vision 
uh, to the people of the province. And, and we said, here's our platform and here are the principles that are going to guide and the values that are going to guide us. And, uh, you know, low in the polls and all of those kinds of things. And for me, it was always, all right, at the end of the day, people might say, well, we don't like your approach. Mm-hmm. But when it was all said and done and I'm gone back to my real life, uh, you know, I'll always be able to look at myself in the mirror because regardless of how it all turns out, you know, I remembered what I said to the people of the province and I did my level best to meet that commitment and, right. you know, supported by my caucus. My caucus has been steadfast. And I, I said to them the other day, you know, politicians have given up a lot of ground by their own actions that are, are far from laudable. And that washes back over everybody, even because I do believe it's an honorable calling. And so many mm-hmm. wonderful people have gone before us. Yeah. You know, sure. we need to take that ground back. Yeah. And I think, you know, slowly but surely, we're doing. Because you can only yeah. start where you are. Right. And do the best you can mm-hmm. and see where that takes you. Premier Dunderdale, uh, the trade agreement, CETA. Um, yes. You were, uh, you have been, uh, you know, delighted with that as as well. Uh, since uh, it, ha- it people are starting to dig into some of the details. Now, we won't go into all, uh, details at the moment. We don't have nearly enough time. But uh, are, are you still happy with it? When you hear people say, why didn't she, why didn't she get something included about importation of seal products into Europe. Why did she allow herself to be, or us as a, a nation, allow ourselves to be bullied uh, by these uh, s- s- false moralists over in Europe when it comes to seal products? How do you respond to that? Look, you know, we look at, at the art of what's possible. Right. And, uh, you know, the WHO was hearing the, the piece on seals. And, you know, I've certainly been a strong advocate for uh, the seal fishery. So we looked at a number of things, some of the things we got to include, uh, some things we did. We ap- approached these negotiations uh, with a great deal of comprehension because, you know, we're not a great manufacturing economy, mm-hmm. so we don't bring a whole lot to the table. And our experience, at, at least anecdotally in Newfoundland and Labrador, is that we haven't always been well served in trade by the rest of the country. Right. So for the first two years of these negotiations, we wouldn't even officially join. Mm-hmm. You know, we just had our officials there uh, as observers. But, you know, when it got down to the crunch, we had to get in. And, uh, and we knew that they wanted something on procurement, and we were very comfortable with that because, uh, you know, and in terms of getting the best benefit for the people of the province, we're, you know, we worked through that one fairly well. And we knew there were some areas that we could give on procurement that wouldn't have uh, an impact on the economy here in the province. We'll probably work well for it, in fact. And we knew that they wanted something from NPRs. Now, NPRs, in terms of Europe, um, uh, aren't aren't significant for us here in the province. And mm-hmm. we tested that with the FFAW and with the processors and other experts in the industry. And what they were saying to us and the Fisheries Council of Canada was saying to us, give it up. If we, give up NPRs, and if we can get access to the European market like five years down the road, seven years down the road, mm-hmm. that would be wonderful. And get rid of the tariff barriers. And get rid of the tariff barriers. Then we can get, you know, got 400 million customers, only 13% of our shrimp, for example, yeah. our fish products, yeah. get into Europe. We can get that up to 90-odd percent. That will may add tremendous value to the fishery. So even if we have to give this up now and get this benefit five years down the road or seven years down the road, it's worth it to us. Mm. And, you know, as a government, we said, hang on a second here now. We said, thank you very much. We didn't argue with them. But we came back and we said, no way. If you want this, and, uh, and you know, they left fish to, you know, there were another number of circumstances that we took advantage of. They left fish for one of the last things to negotiate. And so, you know, the whole trade deal now was, was kind of hinging on fish, mm-hmm. which put us in a very strong position. Yeah. And so, you know, the stars lined up for us. We took a position. We said, no, no, no. You know, if we give up NPRs now, um, you know, we have to have immediate access uh, for our fish products. 
uh, you know, we talked to, you know, and then the federal government got cute. And because, you know, and I'll be really frank about it, because they got cute, they put themselves in a really vulnerable position. And when they put themselves in a vulnerable position, you know, we pressed our advantage on behalf of the people of the province. And we got $280 million in new funding for the fishery. And, you know, that's one of the most exciting things that has happened in the fishery, certainly in my lifetime, Bill. You know, it's new money. It's for uh, uh, transitioning the the fishery into one that can compete worldwide. We have access to this huge market. And I guess one of the uh, observations from the industry itself that meant a lot to me was they felt validated. They felt that the fishery had achieved a position in the psyche of government and people of the province that it was equal to anything else that was going on here. And, you know, I think that's really, really important. Premier Dunderdale, we could talk all day about these and other vital issues. Uh, Unfortunately, we're running out of time fast. We're way past another break, for example. (laughs) Time flies when you're having fun. But look, is there anything you'd like to conclude with before I say it's been been enjoyable talking to you? I'm off the air as of uh, Friday, my last day, so I won't have the the opportunity to have a gab with you on the air again but I hope you have a great Christmas and a great New Year and to you and yours and I want to thank you personally for the service that you have provided to the people of Newfoundland and Labrador through your role uh, on Open Line you have facilitated uh, uh, you know wonderful debates and encouraged dialogue in this province that has served us all well and I want to thank you, well, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the people of the province for that service. I want to wish you and yours uh, the Marys of Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'll look with interest at, to what you're going to do next because I think <laughs> you're going to do till you're done. I'm going to be doing books and uh, watch okay. out now because you may be in my next one. <laughs> oh, that's true but I, uh, you know, that's okay because I got two or three books in me too. Oh, oh, oh the, the, battle of, the battle of the books. This is going to be good. <laughs> okay, to the Frederick. people of the province too, I want to wish them a, a happy, happy uh, Christmas and a wonderful New Year. It's an exciting time to be in Newfoundland and Labrador. The best truly is yet to come. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, all the very best to you. And no doubt we'll have a chat when we run into each other Absolutely. at some, some events. Absolutely. forward to it. All the very best. All the best. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.